There are so many no-code tools and platforms on the market today that it can be really hard to figure out which one to use. And so in this video, we're gonna talk through a number of different variables you should be considering to make the right decision for your app or project. All right, so the very first thing you need to do is analyze the scope of your particular app. And you need to be asking yourself, how complex is your application or, or how complex will it be? How comprehensive do you want the platform to be? And how custom do you want your app to be? Now, these things overlap in some ways, but you need to figure out where you fall on the spectrum. So we have the high complexity, comprehensiveness, and customization on the right side, and then of course the low on the left side. Now to give you a frame of reference, we're gonna go through an example. Let's say you want to create a survey that uses logic based on a user's selections as they go through that survey. So for instance, let's say in your survey, users are presented with the first question and based on their answer to that question, either they will go to now the second question or maybe instead they will go to an alternate question or maybe kind of um, an addition to the first question. And then maybe from here, they'll actually go down to what would be question number three, maybe they skip question two altogether and so on. But essentially what we're getting at here is that everything in the survey is based on logic that is related to a user's choices. Now, going back to the spectrum that we were just talking about, being able to create a survey like this doesn't take too much complexity or customization or comprehensiveness in terms of the tool that you're using. So we would really be looking somewhere right here on the spectrum because it's not just a straight list of questions that you're asking. There does need to be some level of complexity or customization because you are using logic. But let's look on the flip side. So now compare that to instead having the ability to create the survey builder. So instead of just needing to create your own survey using logic, you actually want to create a tool that lets other people create surveys using logic. Same general idea, but one has a very low level of complexity and customization, and the other has a very high level. So for that type of project, we would find ourselves over on this side of the spectrum, not only because of the complexity and customization needed to build a survey builder like that, but because you would really need a very comprehensive platform that would allow you to create that kind of complexity and customization. Hey, by the way, if you have found any of this helpful so far, then you're going to want to head to our free extended training next, which takes you through all the steps you need to take in order to become a successful no code app entrepreneur. You can check that out over at coachingnocodeapps.com forward slash workshop, make sure to head there next. I also want you to consider your scope based on what you need now versus what you might need in the future. Is your scope very contained and is it going to stay that way? Or do you expect it to evolve over time? You know, maybe you are building the first version of your app right now, but you're going to expand that maybe significantly within the next year or so. Maybe you want to build custom business systems to go along with your app. Where is your app going to go? Now, I don't like to plan too far ahead because it usually takes into account too many unknowns and that can actually be counterproductive. But when you're choosing a no-code platform, it's at least good to have an idea of what you plan to do. So now that you have a general idea of scope, we can start to talk about tools and platforms that are gonna fit the needs of these different sections of our spectrum. Now, going back to our survey builder example, on the very low end of the spectrum, you could look at a tool like JotForm, which essentially lets you create forms using conditional logic. But when going back to actually creating the form builder itself, that's when we look at a platform like Bubble, which lets you build web applications without coding. So looking at that lower level of customization and complexity, we could be using a SaaS product, a software as a service to fulfill our needs. Now, when you're using a SaaS, you're essentially able to create 
custom components. So a survey, for example, would be a custom component of probably a larger process. And you are going to be constrained in terms of what you can create, because obviously you're only going to be working within the boundaries of that software service in particular. But on the flip side, with that high level of customization, we would be looking at a pass or a platform as a service. So that's where you're actually using the platform to create your own custom product. Obviously, you're still going to be working within the boundaries of that platform, but it's going to give you much more free reign to create create the level of complexity that you want. And instead of creating that maybe one business component like you might with a SaaS product, you're going to be, be able to create many business components that can actually work together and communicate with each other. So we're looking at those SaaS products over here. And SaaS products are often considered to be no-code tools, which is why we're talking about them. And then we're looking at those platforms as a service on this right side of the spectrum. But there is kind of an in-between section that I also want to hit on. So when thinking about creating those individual components of what is likely a larger process using different SaaS tools, you can actually have multiple components. So maybe you use multiple different SaaS tools to run different processes, but you want those to be able to work together. So if a certain trigger happens in one SaaS tool, so one component that you've created, then maybe a certain action happens in a different one. And instead of having to go to the other end of our spectrum and use a platform to build everything custom, you can kind of string those together using tools like Zapier or Make. For an example of this, let's say you have your form builder here, like we talked about, and when your users fill out a form, you actually want them to be sent into your email marketing service, and then you want them to then automatically be sent into your learning management system. So maybe you would use a service like JotForm like we talked about here. Maybe you'd use a service like ActiveCampaign for your email marketing, and then maybe you'd use Thinkific for your learning management system. Now you wouldn't have to build any of these in terms of the actual platform, right? Because you're only using SaaS products to create the components, but you could connect them all using tools like Zapier or Make, which essentially just allow your different tools to communicate with each other. Now your particular use case is going to help you cut through a lot of this. Maybe you are building an app for your own internal use. Maybe it's just for external use. Maybe it's both. But this full spectrum overview should help you get a good idea of everything that we're working with. Now we're going to zoom in on this right side of the spectrum and look at platforms versus smaller scope tools. Now when digging into platforms, it's important to first differentiate between apps and websites. Apps are solutions to problems and they are products that users can access in order to create data, manipulate data, access data. They're using the product in order to solve a specific problem, whereas a website is an information-based page, maybe a landing page, it could be a blog, it could even be a storefront. And it's either used to present a visitor with information or to lead them into purchasing maybe a digital product like a course or an ebook or even a physical product that they might order and have delivered to themselves. Now, the reason why I say this is because we have platforms like WordPress or Shopify or Webflow. And these platforms let you create websites, landing pages, or even storefronts without using code. So they are no code, but they don't allow you to build actual custom applications. So going back to our initial spectrum, we have our kind of SaaS no-code tools over here. We have our 
pass tools over here, the actual platforms. And then we talked about that in between section where we maybe connect um, different components that we create using SAS tools, using tools like Zapier or Make. And so we went through this flow where we have, you know, our form that then communicates with our email marketing service that then communicates with our learning management service. Well, when we look at platforms like Webflow or WordPress or Shopify, we're creating our front end on those platforms. And instead of then kind of stringing together triggers and actions, like with that in-between section of the spectrum, you can actually connect different tools to that front end. So you could have a connection with that EMS, right? The um, email marketing service or with your LMS, your learning management service, or with, you know, a bunch of other tools. And so you are creating a more comprehensive and custom experience, but you are still limited with the complete customization because going back to our spectrum Again, we're not going to be able to get to the level of complexity and customization that you could get to with a platform like Bubble, which is actually going to allow you to create a custom data-driven application. And that's where we really see the differentiation between our um, front-end website or storefront builders and our platforms like bubble, which create those data-driven apps. To give you an idea of what we're talking about when we say data-driven applications, here are some common use cases that we tend to see on bubble. And this list is certainly not exhaustive, but for example, with bubble, you can build custom marketplace apps. You can build the e-commerce stores, those storefronts that we talked about just a minute ago. You can build directories or application tracking systems, complete HR management systems. You can build ERPs, inter enterprise resource planning apps, or really just internal business tools that handle all the different business processes. You can build CRMs. Um, you can build tracking apps. And I'm talking tracking from anything with, you know, personal wellness, like you see here, to project management or even goal tracking, productivity tracking. Um, you can build rideshare apps. You can build contract or document generators, social networks, recommendation platforms. I mean, there is not a huge limit as to what you can build with a platform like Bubble. But the reason why I want to go through that list, and while those are just some examples, it should give you a good idea of the differentiation between a data-driven application versus uh, what you could build on a website development platform like a storefront or a landing page or something along those lines. So now we've kind of covered the broad spectrum of no-code tools in general, and we've really singled in on those custom no-code app development platforms, but there are considerations that you need to make in order to choose the best one of those particular types of tools for yourself as well. So going back to our initial spectrum, we have those SaaS no-code tools, we have that kind of in-between section, and we have our past tools, the platforms as a service. Now we know that just because it's a no-code platform does not mean that it is going to allow you to build custom data-driven applications. So we're actually going to zoom in just on this very right side here, where we really are looking at the past products that let us build custom data-driven applications. And we're going to turn this into a spectrum of its own so that we can compare those as well. Now, there are a number of no-code app development platforms available, and more will continue to come onto the market. And so we're not going to compare the different platforms by line item, if you will. Instead, we're going to look at it like this. With our different app development platforms, you still want to look at 
at how comprehensive the platform is, how complex you can make your app and how much you can customize it. And you wanna place those platforms somewhere on this spectrum. Now we personally use Bubble because Bubble is at the far right side where you're gonna get the most comprehensive platform. You can build the most custom and complex web applications without code, but just because you get kind of the most with Bubble doesn't mean that you should specifically use it. Now, the reason why I say that is because if we put Bubble at the far right side, the farther you get over there, the higher learning curve you're gonna come up against. So if you're using Bubble, you should expect for there to be more time spent learning the platform compared to some of the other platforms that you could potentially be using because it makes sense that with the highest level of comprehensiveness, the highest level of complexity and customization possible, you are going to have a higher learning curve. One of the things that we hit on at the very beginning of this conversation was, what do you anticipate your needs being right now? And how do you see those evolving in the future? Now, when you look at a platform like Bubble, you're gonna be able to build the most complex and custom applications, and you're gonna be able to go the farthest with them in terms of scalability and growth. Whereas if we go to the other side of the spectrum and we look at the lower levels of customization, less comprehensive platforms, you're gonna be more limited on both of those fronts. But it's really important to understand what you personally need, because if you don't need to go the farthest in terms of scope and scalability, then you don't need to put yourself through that higher learning curve. You can choose something that's gonna allow you to get up and running more quickly. It's just not gonna take you as far. So this is fundamentally how to choose the right no-code app development platform for you. And once you've taken this perspective, then you can go to that line item comparison, which is really easy to pull up no matter which platform you're looking at. Once you do that, then you can start looking at things like whether the platform is actually a no-code platform or is it a low-code platform, in which case you probably still need to hire a developer. Are there certain industry regulations that you need to comply with? For example, if you were building a healthcare app in the United States, do you need a platform that is HIPAA compliant? You also want to look at things like community and support. How prevalent is that? How many resources are there for the platform that you're considering to help you build your app? These are the kinds of line item things to kind of compare and contrast after you've taken that fundamental perspective. All right, I hope this was helpful. And if it was, then the content you're about to see on the screen next is gonna help you take it even further. 